All right, so let's take a look at the derivative or really differentiation table, um, at least I've been using to make these videos so far. Um, so this is the table that's up right now. And on the table, you can see there's a couple U's and uh, V's and DV's um, on the table, but most of the functions use notation with X. So here are the trigonometric functions, you know, sine of x, cosine of x, exponential, we use e to the x, natural log of x, you know, inverse tangent of x. Most of these are with respect to x. But with the chain rule with the previous video, or that we saw in the previous video, we don't have to use x. We can use any type of a function and still take the derivative as long as we have the du at the end. So in most books, you actually won't see tables like this. These are very general forms with x. Now I'm going to scroll up, and this is a smaller table, but it has many of these uh, rules in terms of u. And this is what you really need to get used to using, especially when you look at integration tables. A lot of integration tables are going to use u and v notation. And they're the exact same rules, but instead of um, instead of having everything in terms of x, they have things in terms of u, and then at the end they have this du at the end. Which in this case they call du over dx. It's the same thing. Um, I'll write this on the side. du is the same thing as really the derivative with, with respect to x of u, which is the same thing as du over dx, all saying the same thing, in this case at least. So let me get rid of this stuff. So here we have the rule of a constant multiplied by u. You can take the constant out. Um, we have the you know, sine, cosine u, du, all, all of these rules. So we'll, we'll start with uh, an example, and really all of these are using the chain rule. So this is just using this table, you are using the chain rule. But let's start with some examples. Uh, I'll do three examples of this, um, then we'll, we'll move on from this subject and get back more to the core of the curriculum and the applications of derivatives. So the first example, we will say we have cotangent of x cubed minus 2x. And we want to find the derivative. So the process that I'm going to go through here is I'm going to look for the rule that matches the closest. And I'm going to find the rule that, that has really the outer bounds of this function. So in this case, we have cotangent of something in the middle. So cotangent is kind of the outer part of the function. And I see we do have a rule for cotangent of u. So when we take the derivative of cotangent of u, um, we, have to, we have to define our u. And it's really whatever is on the inside in this case. So on the inside, we have x cubed minus 2x. We can call that, we can make that, we can define u as x cubed minus 2x. And when I use this triple equal sign, I'm basically saying it's defined as, it's just a slightly different notation. But you can, you can also just write it as a normal equal sign. Um, so I'm going to define u as x cubed minus 2x, and I'm going to rewrite the original function as the derivative with respect to x of cotangent of u, and now we can actually use this notation, and we find that this is equal to negative cosecant squared of u times du over dx. So this is the result of the derivative, so I'm going to write this again down here. So negative cosecant squared of u, and I can plug in u now. So we said u was x cubed minus 2x, but we still have this du here. 
So what is du? So to find du, we have to take the derivative of this. And sorry, let me actually write this on the side. So u we define as x cubed minus 2x. du, we just have to use the polynomial rule that we learned before, or really the exponent, the exponent rule. So x cubed minus 2x is 3x squared minus 2. And just as a reminder, we get that from pulling the 3 down, subtracting 1 to make that a 2. And the derivative of minus 2x is just negative 2. So du is 3x squared minus 2. So the final answer, is, with when multiplying by this du, is 3x squared minus 2 at the end. And so this is the full derivative. All right. So let me erase this. I'll start from scratch. And we'll do another practice problem. We're going to make this a little bit more complicated now. We're going to add we're going to add a second layer. So before we had something inside of a function, now we're going to have a function outside of all of that. So this time let's do I guess I haven't really thought these out beforehand, but let's take the derivative of the square root of, we're going to say cosine of natural log of x. So this is a nasty looking derivative, but if we just follow in a systematic way, we just follow these rules with the u, notate, the u notation, we'll find the answer pretty quickly. All right, so just to make this easier on myself, I'm going to rewrite this as cosine natural log of x, oh, three parentheses there, squared. Or sorry, not squared. Uh, raise the power of one half. So that's the same thing as taking the square root. And I guess now that I actually look at this uh, derivative table, there is specifically a square root one. Um, but I was just going to use the exponent rule, which is uh, why don't I see? There it is. I was just going to use that one. This is the same. This square root one is a special version of the exponent one here, so it's they just kind of wrote it there. But you can use either in this case. Okay, so we have an exponent around something in the center. So I'm going to define this in the center as u, like we did before. So u is equal to cosine of natural log of x. And I'll rewrite our derivative. Let me zoom out a little bit. So this is going to be the derivative of u to the one half. Now it's a very simple derivative, we can take it. And this is going to equal one half u to the negative one half. And again, we are just following our exponent rule. So we bring the one half down. And then we subtract 1, so we brought 1 half down uh, to multiply it, and subtracting 1 gives us negative 1 half. And now we still have this du at the end. And I know these are written as du over dx, just, just to make it a little quicker, I'm just writing the du. Alright, so now we can plug this, well actually I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find the du first, because you'll see... Um, we'll need to do an extra step here. So du equals cosine of natural log of x. Now we do have a rule for cosine of u here. We don't have a rule for cosine of natural log, so we have to do another layer here and say uh, we're taking cosine of v. And I'm going to try to make my u's and v's look very distinct. So we have our du, 
or du is cosine of, or, yeah, our, let me, let me back up here for a second. I, I don't want to make this too confusing. So u equals cosine of natural log of x. All right, um, but we do, to take the derivative, we do have to call the inside something else. So we're going to say u equals cosine of v and define v as natural log of x. All right, and this is v. All right, so to find du, because we want to find what du is for this part, to find du, you have to take the derivative of cosine of v, cosine of v, d over du of cosine of v, and that from our derivative rule is negative sine u du. So negative sine, in this case it's v dv. All right, sorry for this being a little bit messy. So this is our du. Our du is negative sine v dv. And we define v as natural log of x. So now we have to find dv. dv, and this is, dv ends up just being an actual derivative rule, natural log of x. So let's get back up here. Uh, where is natural log? Here we go. So this is natural log. So the derivative of natural log of u is 1 over u, du. So dv, and we're using v this time, so natural log of x is 1 over v um, d... Oh, excuse me, sorry. So we do have it in terms of x here. So natural log of x is 1 over x dx. And now finally we know dx is just equal to 1. So that goes away. So let me change color here. I remember how to do this. So we have our dv, we have our du, and we have our u. And now we can plug everything back in, and I guess we have our v. So this this is our answer. We just have to plug in all the pieces. So our final answer, I'm not, I'm not even going to rewrite that derivative. Our final answer is 1 half times u, which we said was cosine of v. So cosine of v du, which here we said was negative sine v dv. And now we have to plug in all the v's and the dv's. <laughs> this is the second layer that we have. So if this was just x, we would be done, but no, we actually defined v. So this is equal to 1 half cosine. We said v was the natural log of x times minus sine of v, which again is natural log, natural log of x, times dv, which is 1 over x. And now that is our final derivative. And just as a reminder, our starting point was the derivative of the square root cosine of natural log of x. So that was our starting point. That is our finishing point. These two are equivalent. So that was a long, long trip to get there. Um, but we just followed the the u substitution rules systematically, and we found the answer. And you can have as many layers as you want. The more layers you have, the more difficult it is to keep track of all the pieces. Uh, but that is a what I would call a two-layer derivative. All right, so let's do one more example. I'm going to keep it about uh, this. Uh, of this caliber. I was going to do a third layer, but just based on how long that took and my poor ability to 
keep everything in a very nicely categorized flow. I'm going to try it one more time with the same type of um, same type of caliber and go from there. So let's erase all this. Erase, erase. All right. All right, so let's do, um, what do I feel like doing? We already did cosine. Let's do tangent. I'll do tangent squared of the square root of x. All right, so that's going to be our derivative. We're taking the derivative of tangent squared of the square root of x. All right, so first step, we're going to look at what the outermost function is. And this is a little bit tricky because you might think the outermost function is tangent, but we actually have tangent squared. So the outermost function is actually the square. So just to make this a little more easy to see, I'm going to rewrite this as tangent of the square root of x. Sometimes I use these square brackets just so it's a little different from normal brackets. I can keep track of uh, which set of brackets it is. So really derivative of tangent of square root of x, all that squared. So just as before, we're going to rename the inside as u. So derivative of u squared, and we're defining u as tangent of the square root of x. And to take this derivative here, we just use the exponent rule. So this is just 2u du. And we have our u down here. So our u is tangent of the square root of x. And now we need to find du because we'll need to plug in du up here. So uh, du, or really the derivative of x with respect to u is, and to do that we have to rename tangent, or we have to rename the u uh, for the second layer. So that is also the tangent of v, where v is defined as uh, square root of x, and dv is one half x to the minus one half. We kind of just did that in the last problem. I know I went through that pretty fast, but square root of x is one half x to the minus one half, just from the uh, exponent rule. All right, so we have our v, we have our dv, we have our u, and we need to find our du. So du is going to equal the derivative of tangent of v. Our tangent rule here is that it's equal to secant squared v dv. So that is secant squared of v dv. All right, and uh, now we can have all the pieces and we can plug everything back in. So our derivative of tangent square root of x squared we have down here is 2u du and we can start plugging stuff in. So this is equal to 2 times and our u we said is tangent of v and our du is secant squared v dv. So secant squared v times dv. Alright, and now we plug in our v's. So our v is square root of x, our dv is one half x to the minus one half. So this is going to equal 2 times tangent 
uh, v, which is uh, square root of x. times secant squared square root of x times dv which is one half x to the minus one half and our dv is really one half x to the minus one half dx but I just didn't write the dx because dx is one so this is our final answer this is the derivative um, with, yeah, again, t again, two layers of uh, U substitution. All right, um, I hope that has shed a little clarity on the best way to use this type of derivative table here. And I'm really going to move on after this. I'm not going to go too in depth with the derivative tables because it, it can get pretty repetitive. It's the same rules and you just if you just use it in this manner, just find the outermost function and work your way down to however many layers there are. Um, it's pretty routine to find the derivative in this way. So the next couple videos, we're going to continue moving into applications of derivatives and why what you can do with these, why they're useful. Mm -hmm.